Welcome to Global Pillar Ministry, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the kingdom of God. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024. Let's give God a clap offering. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give God praise. We give God thanks. We are excited, super excited in 2024. God is set to do marvelous things. We give God thanks that Saturday. And we are still in the mood of Thanksgiving. At the same time, when the first week of January 2024, the first week of the year 2024, the first week of the first quarter of the year. So a lot of first first this week. And glory be to God, is your humble one birthday. Today is my birthday. And um, since January, it's a wonderful day. So there's no better time to teach God's word or there's no better thing to do on my birthday than to share the word of God to the world, than to share the gospel to the world that Jesus saved me some years ago and God is still keeping me and my family. And so God has trust us with this word to share, to build families, to build nations and to get men back to their Bible. So I tell myself, happy birthday to me and thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all the well wishes. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for everything that God has been using you to do in my life. I say God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we start with our first destiny confession for the year. It says, yes, I dare to be different. I dare to take a stand for my family. I dare not join the masses to miss the mandate. <laughs> my own is unique and special to God. I take it again. I dare to be different. I dare to take a stand for my family. I dare not join the masses to miss the mandate for my family. Hallelujah. My own is unique and special to God. You know, I'm just excited in my spirit, man. I'm just bubbling because I know that 2024 has come and God is going to do great things for the Global Pillar Ministry, for our partners, for our sponsors, for those who are joining in and those that will join. We started Family Dynamics series uh, about a month ago. And to be honest, the feedbacks have been awesome. And we are learning more practical application, even as people bring men and women our way who need one thing or the other, who needs to be counseled. Those principles have been applied to them and they begin to see that there's no marriage that is un every marriage is unique and individuals in marriage must accept to embrace their differences and majority of our differences came from poor communication and that was taken in communication in marriage and then we went on the christmas message looking at the life of joseph and mary that every man has to rise for their family. God is looking for point man for homes, for families. Why? Because 2024 is the year of the family. Hallelujah to the glory of God. In 2024, your family is going to be visited. In 2024, God is going to lift your family out of Dogon. God is going to lift your family from where you think no matter how good you are now, no matter how blessed you think you have been, I have a word of the Lord for you. I have a word of prophecy for you that God is taking your family higher and better in the name of Jesus. God is taking your family higher. Why? How do I know? In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, For I know the thought I think towards you, saith the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, to bring you to the place of expectation. Every family is a trust. Every family has a mandate before God. 
And that is why you must be careful on how you administer your family matters. Every husband is called to be a priest. Every husband is called to be a prophet. Every husband is called to be a pastor. You are called to be a protector. You are called to be a provider. You are called to be a procreator, a progenitor. What I call the 6P of the penis of man. The 6P of the penis of man. And so when men become, when you accept the role as a priest over your family, when you accept the role of a prophet, of a provider, of a protector, of a procreator in your family, when you assume those dimensional roles in your home, I tell you, 2024 is for you to take. I, 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 in the spirit of Caleb, let us go up at once and possess our possessions. I want you to go in 2024 to possess your possessions. Family is God's idea. Families is God's plan of continuity on earth. Family is God's model to bless nation. We just celebrated Christmas a few days back. God has to come down on to earth through a family, the family of Joseph and Mary. So what is it about family? And that is why the enemy is fighting the family institution. But I tell you, the Lord says, I will build the church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. The gate of hell will not prevail over your family in the name of Jesus. The gate of hell will not prevail over your wife, over your husband, over your children, over your project, over the prospect in the name of Jesus. How do I know? The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you and God bless you. Once again, today is my birthday and so I will be sharing out of excitement the teaching that God wants me to share with us tonight as we build the family institution in the service of God. Our scriptural reference tonight is the book is an unusual place to teach on a new year day or the first week of the year. But there's something God wants to do. There are things God wants to put right early in the year so that we don't miss it. The foundation is critical. The foundation is important. The foundation is the, how tall a building will go, how, uh, how enduring, how strong against the storm of life depends on the foundation. So let us take this week as a foundation for what God is going to do for your family this year. Praise the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 5, from verse 1. It says, But a certain man named Ananias, which Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being private to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan feed thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why it remained? Was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried their husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straight away at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carried her forth, 
buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. The Lord will bless us. The Lord will bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Tonight, I will be speaking on the danger of bad wagon in marriage. The danger of bad wagon in marriage. Well, as the lesson go on, you may want to put a different topic to it, but we are looking at family institution, and when you are warned early in the at the beginning of a journey, you are better prepared for that journey. When you have advanced information on a particular business, you are better prepared and suited for that business. It's like a man that carry out feasibility studies, financial analysis of a project is about to embark on. The reason is that it saves you a lot of losses. It saves you ample time. It saves you from unnecessary distraction. And it is in that context that we bring you tonight the marriage of Ananias and Sapphira. Well, I try to look at Sapphira as a very beautiful woman. In our, in our society today, when you see a woman called gold, oftentimes they are beautiful. When you see a man called gold, oftentimes they are very handsome. They say name follows people. I want to believe that Sapphira is from Sapphire. I want to believe that Sapphira is from Sapphire, which speak of a precious stone, a very precious name. So I see her as a pretty young woman, a young wife that failed to save situation in her family. I see her as a woman who was subdued by her husband, even though in the church. Now, the background message, when you go to chapter 4 of Acts of Apostles, you will say that God was moving mightily and there was a revival that broke out in Jerusalem. And that revival was so powerful that men began to make sure that the community life of the early church was strengthened. And men began to sell what they had so that brethren can have joint ownership and joint sharing. Now, the Bible says in Acts of Apostle chapter 4, verse 36, it says, and Joseph, or verse 35, it says, and led them, well, let me go to verse 34, say, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as we are possessors of lands or houses, so them. Early Christians were not poor. Early believers were not poor. There are people that had houses. There are people that had lands. So it was not the gospel was not just to the poor. The gospel was for both the poor and the rich. The Bible says some had lands, some had houses, and they sell them. Now the Bible says. When they said those things, they brought them to the feet of the apostles and laid them, so that distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sowed it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Everybody was doing it. Everybody was doing it. There was a revival in the church. People were selling land and houses. Just out of the blues, a couple came out to identify the danger of bad wagon in marriage. Others sold houses and lands. They brought the money and said, Apostle, this is what we sold it so that others can have. But the Bible said there was a particular couple. It said, but a certain man, when God introduced birth, is a sad narrative. 
a certain man, a certain couple did the same thing. They sold their possession. And instead of bringing the whole money to the apostles, they brought part of it. Now, that was not the crime. There are principles in this scripture. One, God never forces you to give what you don't want to give. I'll show you how. God never forces you to give what he has not prepared you to give. God never forces a man or a woman to give beyond their level of faith. If you want to stretch your faith, you can. But it's never by compulsion. That is why Apostle Peter was pained in the statement he made. The Bible says they conspired. There was no reason for conspiracy. You don't need to conspire with your spouse. Now, I'm going to relate it to your marriage or to my marriage. When God is moving in the church, when God is moving in the midst of his people, if you don't want to be part of it, it's better you stay on your own. But if you want to be part of that move, be part of that move wholeheartedly. Hallelujah. The danger of bad wagon in marriage. The Bible says something that when Ananias, the Bible says they conspired. I don't know how Satan tricked Ananias and Sapphira. I don't know how Satan deceived them. They were trying to tell them. I'm sure they just wanted to be part of the move. They wanted to be part of what was going on. They were excited to be to say, yeah, and the Bible said they sold their land and they kept part of it. And that broke the heart of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says they brought part of it and they pretended that that was all. That was the message we got from Apostle Peter. Because in verse 4, he said, Why it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? That means, assuming they sold the land for $2 million, and they say, Sir, we sold it for $2 million, or $2 million shekels, using the Bible language, of their day, and here is 500,000 shekels, what they brought would have still be acceptable to God. Their offering would have still be acceptable, but the Bible says what happened, they kept a part of it, the Bible says you only pretended to give it all, yet you hid back part of the proceeds from the sale of your property to keep for yourself. They needed not to do that. As a family in marriage or in relationship, what are you doing that all of your heart is not in it? You stand to walk in the danger of bad what God effect. We are teaching this early in the year for you to understand that in this year 2024, families sit down, plan your family goal, your family tasking, how you want to serve God. Don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the crowd without revelation. In fact, the title can also be the danger of crowd following. Don't follow the crowd. When you follow the crowd, what you call the bad wagon effect, you are not likely to go far in 2024. In the service of God, I want you to understand the dealings of God with you as a husband, with you as a wife. Even if you are unmarried, get to understand how God deals with you. It will help you far better. It will take you further in the school of grace. It will take you further in the school of life. If you take you further in the school of accomplishment. Why? Because the Bible said, they that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Hallelujah. And Anaya and Sapphira pretended to give it all, whereas they were not doing it with all their heart. 
in the service of God in this year, don't pretend to be what you are not. Pretense bring destruction. Pretense bring pretense is a self sabotage. Even in your place of work, when you pretend to be what you are not, you are self sabotaging yourself. Don't self-sabotage yourself before your helper. Because the Bible says, Christ says, when Christ was to ascend, he said, I will go to the Father and I will pray the Father to send you another helper. He will send you the comforter. When Ananias and Sapphira lied, they sabotaged themselves before the helper of helpers. Don't self-sabotage yourself in 2024. How do you self-sabotage yourself? Like in the case of Ananiah, they lied against the Holy Spirit and they faced Eastern judgment. In the modern day, when you assume a capacity that you are not prepared for, you are self-sabotaging yourself. When you assume a role you are not prepared for, you are self-sabotaging yourself. Or let me put it this way, when you assume a role you are not ready to grow into, you are not willing to pay the price, you are self-sabotaging yourself. When you get yourself involved in a move that you don't have revelation about, you are self-sabotaging yourself. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says something again that I see in the life of Ananiah and Sapphira that is very that is that is painful to me. This man fell down and died Easter judgment. Young men came and buried him because in the New Testament time, once you are a believer, you are a believer. Your the family is the church. So it was a painful thing for Peter to see a man lied to the Holy Spirit. Young men came and buried him. And do you know what? For 30 good hours, I'll be asking myself, how come nobody went to tell Sister Safira what happened to her husband? How come nobody could go to their house? Nobody could inform them. Nobody could run and say, Auntie Safi, Auntie Sister Safira, Sister Safira, see what happened to Uncle Ananias? For 30 good hours. You know what? There is a danger of late coming to church. This year, don't make lateness to church an habit. If Ananias and Sapphira went to church together, I want to believe that if, if Sapphira saw her husband died at the feet of Apostle Peter, she would be scared. She would have gone into confession. I don't see her heart be hardened to, to concur. But she came three hours later. The danger of lateness to church. In 2024, make it a family desire not to go to church late. God understand. No, 2024 is a leap year. God wants you to leap. He wants your blessings to come in leaps and bounds. In 2024, God wants to position you where you will be leaping from glory to glory, from height to height, from level to level. But don't go to church late. And now, beside the issue of lateness, I'm just imagine what kind of neighbors were staying around Anaya and Sapphira that nobody could go and tell her. The point is, is as a marriage, as a family in this year, don't live in isolation. The social media is a tool that if not well handled, can destroy family bond, can destroy family ties, can make men live in isolation. I see Anaya and Safira marriage as a very as a marriage in which there was no command and control. There was no control. They conspired together. The wife couldn't check her husband. The wife couldn't check her husband and say, no, let's not do that. In this 2024, in your marriage, if all of you are speaking the same voice all the time, check it. Somebody is deceiving another person. Husband and wife are able to sit down and discuss, agree to dis disagree to agree. Not to conspire. That is not the kind of unity that God is expecting us to have. A unity that lied to God. A unity that pretend before God 
is a dangerous unity. And may God save us from that kind of unity in the name of Jesus. The danger of bad work gone in marriage. And they and Sapphira conspired together and they paid for it. Don't conspire with your husband to defraud God in 2024. Don't conspire with your husband or with your spouse to lie before God. Don't conspire to be what you are not. 2024, prophetically, is a year that is promising God is going to do wonderful things to those that hold on to him. God is going to position men. Men are going to leap in blessings. Men are going to leap in prosperity. But you must not pretend. You must not lie to the Holy Spirit. The Lord will bless his word to our hearts in the name of Jesus. As I begin to round up, Tonight is that God wants you to agree with the Holy Spirit. Are you a wife? You cannot talk. You can because you want to submit to your husband. You don't even know when you cross the line. But we say submit to yourself in the fear of the Lord. Every submission that is that disrespects the fear of the Lord, every submission that violates the fear of the Lord is a slavery. That marriage will not work. In 2024, let your fear be the fear of the Lord. Don't be like Mrs. Safira, Mrs. Ananaya, who couldn't tell her husband, no, a couple should be able to check themselves when they are walking in error. If you are in a marriage in which you cannot check yourself when you are walking in error, cry for help. God is able to bring you out and make you a punt man like Joseph was a punt man to his family. The Lord will bless his word to our heart in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we are trusting God that this year, in this series, at least we are trusting God to heal a thousand marriages, a thousand couple, a thousand families, a thousand home for his start before this series ends. Because we know that God is about to bring revival to family institution. He said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. Whatever you are hearing, you are reading about family, no, hold on to God. Your family is going to be exempted from destruction this year in the name of Jesus. Your family is going to be preserved in the daytime, in the night time. The terror of the night will not locate your family in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is hold on to Jesus. Don't conspire to disobey God. Rather, agree to serve God in truth and in spirit. For God seeketh such to worship him. The danger of bad work gone effect is that if you walk with the crowd, you can destroy your hope. Hold on to Jesus. Take a stand for Jesus and God will stand for you. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your power. We don't want to be like Ananiah and Sapphira who conspired and they were destroyed. Let couples learn to speak truth to one another, to each other. Let family members learn to speak truth to one another, that your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for those partners who are sending their offerings. Thank you for those who are here to do that. Our account number is displayed. Send your offering because the gospel of the kingdom must be published in all the corners of the earth because Jesus is Lord. Once again, God bless you. It's my birthday, so I need to go and rest in the presence of God. God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin presented by Global Pillar Ministry. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of The Word. You can watch previous and current episodes on our YouTube channel Facebook and Instagram channels. You can access the channel using the handle The Word with Levin. Please turn on notifications to join us every Saturday by 9 p.m. Listen to our audio messages on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts by simply searching for The Word with Levin. For inquiries, please call 0903 470 0607 or send an email to info at globalpillarministry.org or visit our website on www 
www.globalpillarministry.org To support the Global Pillar Ministry, please send donations to GT Bank PLC, account number 074-579-5640. God bless you. See you next week.